Listen, alcohol is just out in 2024. There is a rising trend of going alcohol-free or being sober curious, and alcohol the truth is, it's just bad for you and can famously impair your sex life. So if you're looking for another way to unwind, relax, or just have fun, I cannot recommend Vaya's THC gummies enough. Vaya has gummies for every occasion, whether it's to improve your sleep. I love their sleep gummies. I take them everywhere. Your mood or your focus. They even have an aphrodisiac gummy called High Love to boost my arousal levels. High Love has a unique blend of cannabinoids and aphrodisiac exotic herbs that are known for their libido enhancing effects. So I've been using Vaya for a while now and I absolutely love them. They're a super trusted company. They use premium hemp, natural ingredients, and they're known for their premium indoor THCA flower. All their products are made here in the U.S. They got quick and discreet shipping to all 50 states so you can all enjoy them, not to worry, and also super affordable. So head over to viahemp.com and use code EMILY at checkout to save 15% off your order. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Use code EMILY at checkout for 15% off your order and let me know what you think. Urinary tract infections are extremely common. Around 1 in 2 women and 1 in 20 men will get a UTI in their lifetime. Plus, once you've had one UT challenge, you're way more susceptible to another in the future. That's why you just need Just Thrive's UT123. This product can actually prevent UTIs while maintaining your urinary tract health. UT123 targets both immediate and long-term relief. We've all heard to drink cranberry juice for your urinary tract, but did you know that for the full effects, you need the whole cranberry? Not just juice, but the skin, flesh, and even the seeds. Well, UT123 uses superior ingredients that utilizes the whole fruit. This supplement truly is the full package. So if you're someone who struggles with the constant urge to urinate, a burning feeling when you pee, pelvic pain, or just want to be proactive in your urinary health, Just Thrive is for you. Just Thrive is so confident you'll love their product that there is a 100% money-back guarantee on every purchase made through JustThriveHealth.com. And for a limited time, you can save 20% off site-wide at JustThriveHealth.com with promo code SEXWITHEMILY. That's JustThriveHealth.com and use code SEXWITHEMILY for 20% off your order. You're going to love it. Happy New Year's, lovers. Thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. Okay, the new year is right around the corner, and you know what time it is. It's time to start thinking about 2016. How can you be the best lover and dater in the upcoming year? So today, we'll be talking about sex, dating, and relationship resolutions that everyone should be making and share tips on how to make them count. Plus, we'll be answering your emails. It's going to be a great show. Thanks for listening. Okay, guys, I got a personal question for you. Has your self-loving felt a little, uh, how do we say, lackluster lately? Are you looking for a way to mix up your masturbation? Okay, well, I will tell you, the number one sex toy for men, and the only one you want, is the flashlight. How's this? Think about it. Wouldn't it be amazing if you could feel the pleasure of having sex anytime, even if you don't have a partner? The Fleshlight makes this dream come true. It is a masturbation sleeve that you use solo or with a partner that simulates the sensations of real sex. And it was engineered to look and feel like the very real deal. And it really does. You guys got to check these things out. And you can check out my Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff, at Sex with Emily and Twitter. We uh, show a lot of great videos and pictures of them. Uh, between the Fleshlight stamina training unit... You can last longer in bed. The flight, it's a little more discreet. And now, OMG, there's the quick shot. And it looks like a little camera lens. It's an open-ended male masturbator. And um, it's great. It's like the size of your hand. And it can help you with self-pleasure, can help your partner give you a great blowjob or hand job. It is the hand job helper. Uh, check it out. Every woman has a dildo. Every man should have one of these. Go to sexwithemily.com, click on the flashlight banner, use code EMILY, and get a free bottle of their award-winning flash lube. Thanks for listening. Hey, Emily, you got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. The girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean, like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. Well, you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex, relationships, and everything in between. For more information, go to sexwithemily.com. We have a new website. 
You're going to love it. Check it out. Sign up for our mailing list. Don't miss our amazing emails, the blogs we post every day, videos, and these podcasts. So thanks, everyone, for supporting the show. It's been a wonderful 10th year. What's the new website? Um, it's just a new, brand new website. You it's, the same it. web it's the same website, URL. but so much more. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Sexonly.com for 10 years. But it's just going to be, you know, we've got thousands of podcasts and blogs and videos, and it's just going to be easier to navigate, and it looks great. You're going to love it. Um, and also, everyone's been asking me about the live podcast, the, from the, I mean, about the live show podcast, and that's going to be coming out the 5th of January. I know. You can't wait. It's, it's like exciting. Christmas late. I know. I think it's great. Um, no, just because, you know, we wanted to put it together for you all, because that was a great night. We already talked about it on a previous show, so we don't have to get into it. But I have to have some good shows that have come out this week, coming out next week, that you're, you're all going to love. Um, I had the swingers on, Holly and Mike. Mm-hmm. That was Hold a great show. What? Ponytail? Mike, no ponytail. Mike's ponytail? Uh-huh. No, they're the ones from Playboy Radio. They're the ones that um, I went to the swinger party right. with. I don't anything know weird though? Is it like braid his pubes or anything? He, they are the most normal couple that I actually want to hang out with them before. I am oh, yeah. friends with them. Really smart. Yeah, it was fun. So it's been a really good show. Uh, okay, so I'm happy not, New Year's. Yes, it's coming thank up. You. Thank you. It's a couple days away. And what are you uh, gonna do? I don't know. I might be an old man and stay inside and just drink inside where it's cheap and safe. See, that or, makes sense. I might go see my favorite comedian who's playing at the Orpheum, uh, Bill Burr. Is oh, he's amazing. Yeah, Do you have tickets? Uh, no, but I'm sure I can. Is it hard to get tickets? Finagle. Probably. He's doing two shows. I like to do the later show. He's funny. He's I've met best. him. He's amazing. The best. See, that's the thing about New Year's. I I think you have to learn it's this. A lot of pressure. Sort of a rite of passage. You got to go through and have a lot of bad New Year's and a lot of pressure and the hype. And you're like, oh my god, it's like crazy. It's like driving around. I'm drunk and I lost my friends and party <laughs> sucked and they spent way too much money. I used to go to Vegas every year. Oh god, that sounds like awful. Make up, to do. make out with randoms. When oh, that's fun. Yeah. That's fine. In the middle of the street. Yeah. But I think that you realize eventually that New Year's, hopefully, or maybe you never do, but it is sort of an amateur night thing. Oh, for and sure. when you're with your, I just think it's important to be with people you like. Yeah. Use good friends. Even if you stay home, stay with friends, have a party, go to one place that you like and um, do that. But don't put so much pressure on yourself that it has to be like this perfect evening because it can be a cluster. Yeah, F. get like a little blow, pick a location. Don't try and do too many locations. Right. Have a don't couple do bottles too many drugs. Of, like, just pick sh- one. Chapagne on hand. Exactly. And, uh, do, it, do it respectfully. Um, right. I don't even put my pressure. For, I don't even. I don't even pressure myself. For when it, I was but... single, man, it was brutal. You'd be like, "What? I got to do something. It's got to be great. It's got to be a fantastic, memorable night. I, I, I got to hook I up. I got to do this. Got to do that. Like a checklist, and I would just freak myself out. Yeah. Not and now anymore. It's like, yeah. But even if you're, I guess, if you're in a relationship or single, you always think like it's got to be a whole thing. And I get if you're saying, yeah, you're right. If you're single, you want to be fun, go out with your friends. But then, okay, well, San Francisco was different. But when I was, it was like this before. Uber, but you could never get a cab. You'd be stranded. Oh, Uber's going to be super it'd be freezing. Too. Oh yeah, it'd be like eight point five the fare times yeah. the higher the fare. Um, I don't know what I'm doing it though. I'm. Not, it's maybe I'll go with you to the um comedian. Can I go with come, you and your come wife? See Bill Burr. Be the okay. third wheel. It'd be awesome. I just want to say you don't fine. have plans yet. How does sex with Emily not have plans yet? Well, I'm going to go out with my guy that I'm dating, Ross. All right. Well, I thought you were going to be a third wheel. What's going on? Now you have other plans. Oh, You're already standing me up. What well, the maybe hell? I'll go with you. That was the quickest stand up ever. No, maybe we'll go with. We don't have a plan, but he's looking to music. What should we do? Everyone thinks that I have all the. Where's Ross I... from? He's from Danville, the Bay Area. What in the world is Danville? It's like a suburb outside of. All right, so you guys Bay are area. both like from outside yeah, these parts. Yeah, exactly. You don't know what the... No, I mean he's lived here for a few years, and he lived here. He went to school here, but I. You know, then he came and moved back. We met looking for apartments. We were both moving from San Francisco, so we had that in common. Um, I'm not sure yet, but I'm not putting pressure on myself. Um, in the holidays, I'm going to be here, too, which I kind of like. Cause, you know, what? you should find like a New York-themed place and just like bring in the New York New Year and then just be done with it and go home early. So true. Yeah. It's so funny. One of my friends with kids was telling me, she goes, oh, my God, it's so fun. We do the best thing ever. I'm like, what? She's like, well... We like have all of our kids over, like you know, because they're best friends or their neighbor. Mm-hmm. And we get kids, and then we like pretend at like five o'clock. That's like nine, and we just drink like crazy, and then we just go home, and pass out at like eight, and the kids go to bed. And it's that's, fun. that's like that's an adjustment, a, a late game adjustment that you make when you're a when parent. You're a parent, yeah, right, exactly. My parents would just leave me and come home like three days later, but that's cool. oh, then you'd have a party at your house. No, I never did. I was a really good kid, and my parents were divorced. No, that's and leave good. me alone. You know what? People that have parties at their house are desperate. I was always the desperate kids that would have or house their parents parties. parents just don't care. And they really wanted to have friends, so they'd let people come oh. into their parents' house when their parents were out of town. It was always the sad people. You that think? Had the no. It was yes. just the fucked up kids who drank a lot and partied a lot, it seemed. No, those are the ones that showed up at the house. Oh. The people that know. are actually having the party, at least for my growing up. And then, like, people would be stealing VCRs and stuff. It was just sad. Yeah, the VCRs. It was very sad. You know what's so funny? So, your friend Mike Carano, our friend. Mikey. He, t- I love Mike. Um, Mike Carano's amazing. How can people find him if they want to check uh, out how amazing he is? You can listen to him on the After Disaster Weekly with myself. That is 
Anderson's and killer Tyler podcast. I told you, I want to start tweeting out your podcast. I te- texted you last yeah, night. Yeah, you texted me last night, late, late night, and you said to send me your podcast. You, yeah, it made no sense. Said, well, send me your t- podcast because I want to tweet it out, which is really sweet, but I don't, like, do you want me to put it on a disc? And no, just email me because I was like, God, my listeners love you. You make, you do good, but you make great co- podcasts and oh, people should know. And sometimes I think that podcasts are oh. becoming. Speaking of podcasts, like, let me just slip this in real okay, quick. Okay, but remember my Quran. Okay, go, go ahead. Uh, Last week on the Film Vault, I don't know if you know, but I did Star Wars. I saw Star Wars before it came out, so That's I got to review it. That's why I texted you, yeah. because I said, or I post, you post And posted Tarantino's new one, Hateful Eight. Okay, wait, tell yeah, me about so Star Wars. I see Wars. all these movies, but I'm really careful. I don't spoil anything, because people, oh. they're spoilers. But, you know, I just give you an overall vibe, and it's good. The Star Wars fans are going to be happy. Many of them have already seen it uh, at this point, but it uh, does not disappoint, and it's way better than all of those horrific uh, uh, prequels that came out. Man. Really? Prequels were terrible. No sex in any of them. It's all the same no people, boobs. right? From Star Wars, like from the early Star Wars who were still uh, there's alive? There's a, a lot of recurring characters. Okay, yes. you yes, talk yes, about yes. it on the After Disaster. With on Mike the film vault. The film, film vault and oh, After sorry. Disaster we talk about. Oh, that how was my, Mike. How my cat brought in a freaking parrot. She, you told me that. She killed someone's That's- I know. Pet. Your cat is dangerous. Enough. Um, but anyway, Sex. your buddy Mike, speaking of VC, you know, VCRs, what'd you say? VHS? Whatever VHS. you said. Beta is Max. that he gave me, he was so sweet because from the live show, he brought me, remember, he came to Love Line. Oh, he yeah, brought he me CDs and a, a photo. Yeah. Who is a CD player? I have a MacBook Air. There is no seat. There's an adaption. I'm sure you got like a Mac. I'm sure that there's in your office. Though there there's is, like a but like it computer. didn't work. No, 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 no. Give it to me. I'll deal. There is no CD. But what I'm saying is, I, I felt bad because you know, Mike, he was so sweet. It took me four days to figure out to get a CD player to oh, you figured plug it, it in. I did, and they uh-huh. were great. And they so, look good. Okay, cool. Yeah, I just wanted. Do I look just... okay? How do I look? Oh my God, so good! I'll show okay, you after they're on my laptop. Okay, so anyway, what I want to tell you that I and it was good to see you wasted the other night. I was not wasted. Oh, the best part is that I texted you last night. You're like, it was fun that you wasted. You go, I was, I wasn't even. Drunk I saw yet. you in the beginning when you were with Anna David. I saw Emily and I were at the same uh, concert a few, uh, few weeks Acoustic ago. Acoustic Christmas. Acoustic Christmas, and uh, yeah, I had like three beers in me at that point. I was, I was beginning you were, the are night. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, because I was like, I wow, like, Anderson's a good time. I was hammered though later. Yeah. I, I, I did not know. Yeah. I, I, I can't. I, that's why I said we should party together. I thought you but were drinking too, right? I have like two drinks. Emily like inhales a little vodka and she's drunk. Oh my God. I had. Do you remember that love line we had? There's something called the open forum where people call in for a half hour about things. Mm-hmm. One topic like, have you ever cheated on your partner and right. how to work out? So we did blackout sex, remember? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I was like, I don't black out. I don't know. And Drew's like, Jews don't black out. Like we were kidding. Cause Jews we're, don't black well, out. Well, typically this is a very, this is not true. This is a, a gross Jews tend not to um, drink stereotype. Heavily. We're not huge drink. We're yeah. like, there are, I know many Jewish alcoholics, but I'm not. Man, a shavit seven. But I had blackout sex. I had two dirty martinis, uh-huh. and one was very strong. And I, I had sex. And this I, the, the other night I'm when dating. I saw you. No, another night. I wasn't that drunk that night. Okay. This was like a week ago. I went to go see the guy Ross, who plays in a band, and oh. I. What's he play? Bass, guitar. Not bad. Not no, bad. he's been playing his whole life. Like he's not amazing. Yeah. Like, amazing. He was in band before he became a doctor. Uh. But I, I, got, I was by myself. I mean, a bunch of people were there, but I just went and I, I the, the drink was so strong. And we went home and I, in the morning, I was like, did we have sex? And I saw the condo. I was like, oh yeah. And it was a little bit blackout. And I just want to tell you that it happened to me. I feel like it was a little late, but it happened. And I'm like, I'm not a drinker. I don't like it. I didn't like being hungover. I can't drink. No, I can't do anything. I can see that. You just I'm just think of it as like a, a nun. I'm sober, but I'm working out a lot. So, you know, hey, I don't know. I just want to tell you that I, I I'll never that forget blackout sex. Katy Perry came on Love Line a number of years ago and she, she was telling me that she hates drinking because it makes her feel nervous the next day. Oh. I'm like, suck it up and be a little I nervous hate that. every but now the thing and again. I want to get up early, work out, and I don't like it. Hey, I but, like the um, idea that you woke up and you saw a condom and you had no recollection and you didn't immediately like, start throwing your shoes at your boyfriend. Why? Why the fuck is there a condom? You, you just assume that. No, it's, I knew. And then it, it all came back to me. I remember it. I'm like, was it good? But it just it sounds very young. But it was funny because I, I shouldn't drink. Um, but anyway, but I don't drink that often. It was no, weird. You don't. I, I got dry. Like last night, much. you're like, why don't we have a party? I'm like, because you don't. I know. You don't. Lady. So lame. Yeah. yeah. But I want to. Okay. I'm a good time when I don't black out. Um, <laughs> one more thing I got to say before we get into some really juicy New Year's stuff for you guys. Because this year, 2016, is going to rock your world after I'm done with you. Um, Sexual Health Expo, hmm. January 16th and 17th. It's in LA at the Universal Hilton Hotel. Universal City? Where is that, Anderson? It's like. It's right by Universal City. City Walk, Universal it's like, Studios. Yeah, it's, it's right like off the hour. 101. Yeah. Uh, just north of Hollywood. Right. So it's like around this area. And here's the thing. Sexual it's a good health, Hilton, too. Yeah. You've been ta- I've been talking about it for a year now because it's actually our fourth expo. The first one was in L.A. last January. And then it got so popular, we did it in three other cities. And people are just like, love it because there's nothing else like it. For two days, 
the top sex educators will teach you for an hour each. They have like 15 different sessions in two days about everything you want to know in a very short amount of time. The best educators, plus all the cool products I talk about, new ones. There, You can touch them, feel them, ride them. There's a Sibian in there you can ride. Can you blow them? You could blow someone. Um, it's going to be great. So anyway, I want to meet you all. And I'm going to do a live show there with Anderson. You don't know this yet. Are you in town? I was not familiar with this idea. I meant to ask you. What? What is it? It's the 16th and 17th, just one of those days for of like December, three hours. Of January. Two hours, yeah. Of Jan. It's I'll a Saturday, check, Sunday. I have to check my schedule. Okay, Menace is checking too. Oh, are we finally going to fight? You guys are so cute. I have great pictures of us. Um, but anyway, I'm giving away tickets for two people. They're each good for a couple or your friend. Anything. Feedback at sexwithemily.com. Anything. Anyone. Bring your dog. Um, what? Bring Stanley. I said that each ticket is good for two people. And email me why you want to go. Why should you get this free ticket? just might get one. That's what I say about that. Um, I've got a little bit of sex in the news. Sweet. I think this is think a funny good? one. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I read it. I'm like, really? You think I'm going to like it? Because I, I, ever since your exclamation marks a couple of weeks ago. Dude, that's that was, given us a lot of material. Uh, it has, uh, every time I'm texting anyone now, I'm like, uh, my uh, my thumb is going back and forth. Like, do I do it? Do I do it? I don't know what to do now. It's, it's, we had a study that said people who confidence. use periods, people who use punctuation, like are, periods. Are assholes. And I realized that and, upon quickly scrolling my recent messages from Anderson that he always ends in periods. Yes. However, he's not an asshole. Yeah. Empirically, you are maybe to others, but not to me. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we loved that sex in the news story. Okay. So start up to offer $10,000 to couples who don't get divorced. A startup company is offering couples the chance to be rewarded for their commitment, offering free loans towards a dream wedding for any couples willing to stay together for the rest of their lives. Well, isn't that the idea for everybody? Swan Love, a startup based in Seattle, believes everlasting marriage should be rewarded, offering couples a loan of 10000 towards the wedding of their dreams. The loan is free for couples who remain married, but any couples divorce have to pay back the full loan with interest. According to the company's website, the winning applicants are chosen using an algorithm based on assessment of online data, like huh. a predictors, perhaps, that right. these couples are going to be a success. Um, they said that the data found while selecting applicants helps determine the rate of interest applied to the loan. So if they seem like they're kind of iffy, you get like a higher loan. I don't know. Sounds racist. Um, it comes to the stats. We have all the right odds, so we'll be okay. In addition to 10000 they provide free marriage counseling. Um, they're going to launch in mid-February, but they're accepting applications. But here's my issue. I think that marriages are more likely to last than a startup. Let's just put it that way. Mm-hmm. It's a freaking startup. What are the chances of startups lasting? So it says, we want you to last forever. I don't know if the startup's going to be around. I yeah. would take the money. What if we want you to start up uh, and, and last forever? Swan? Yeah, about exactly, that? Swan. How about I'll, I'll give, give you a $5,000 yeah. loan if you uh, don't uh, defunct and uh, default on all of your loans to people? Most businesses fail, what, in the first three to five years? Especially when they're called Swan. Yeah, love, L-U-V. Oh, I know. God, Swan. I know. Come on. Right. So, like, really, Swan, if you're around, like, I, I'll just get married to get the 10000 okay? I do like the concept. Yeah. I like the concept. I do, too. Giving $10,000, and then as soon as one of the uh, people, on the, one of the couple, or one of the, one of the partners dies, you actually get to keep the money. Right. Like, Maybe. I made it all the way to the end. She's dead. I wonder what happens if, like, well, he died. What am I supposed to do? I get the money. It's just, I guess it's just a zero. I wonder if there's loan, stipulations. Right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. But I mean, no, I liked it that, that they're like, hey, let's do a feel good startup so yeah. we can decrease the divorce rate. I mean, they do talk about those studies of, you know, arranged marriages and stuff. People are more likely to stay together. That's weird. I mean, that's a little different. But you know this, why? But like you, you know why that is, I think? Because that's the hype and the build up. Well, what? anyone who's willing to uh, go along with a uh, arranged marriage is probably somebody who's going to put up with a lot. You know what I mean? Well, You're I don't know, but it's kind of like you don't have as many options. You're kind of like, this is what I got to do, even if it's your religion, but you kind of make it work. Maybe that was about different kind of apples and oranges thing. But what I'm saying is anything that it's because that seems to have good stats, which is not yeah. that I want to be in mm-hmm. an arranged marriage. But I just like their whole mission is like, I'm going to do a startup. I could do an app or I could help people stay together and be happy. So Maybe I don't need to bash need. them. And maybe you need an arranged thing there. You know, I got approached to be in a reality show. Do you know that reality show about arranged marriages? No. Me neither. But I, I don't know not, what it's called. Uh, it actually on the, went the on most the recent Dude, reality program. You know, sorry. you know, I don't watch TV. I do but, watch Survivor. Um, I I was approached, and they like I went through the process, casting, and they were like, "We want you to be in this," and I was like, "Yeah, I'd be down." But I don't remember what happened. I think I did my other reality. How show. long ago was it? Oh, this is years ago. But no, it's like no. Miss Advice came out in two. Th- my I did a reality show on Bravo. You can buy it on iTunes if you are dying to see me on television, or learn. you're like a hippy dippy woman on that show. Kinda. I mean, yeah. I'm San Fran. I'm, am I different than I am now? Oh, I don't People know. People think I'm a hippie. I get my friends are like, you're such yeah. a hippie, but I don't think I'm happy. Yeah, everything goes. But when I was in, whatever, it doesn't matter. But 2011, maybe. Okay. 
And I think it's and been on the And they're going to set air. you up with somebody? Yeah, like you have like one date and then you get married. Uh-huh. I mean, the whole thing Sounds is awful. crazy. I just went through because like I, it's just like any job interview right. day. I'm like, I'll try, I'll try this. I wasn't looking to be on a radio. It just kept coming to me. I'm this glad shit. that it fell through. Thank you, honey. Yes. So here I am, single. Mm-hmm. No, I, I'm in a relationship. I keep yeah. calling myself single. You're with a dude who plays guitar and he's a doctor. He's hot. Come on. Yeah. I mean, you slipped that in. Like, and I, I realized it was a humble brag and you were doing it. I'm not like, bragging. Real, like, coy and off the cuff. But yeah, you know, he's been playing guitar since before he was a doctor. No, no, no. Just funny because you're like, oh, before he was a doctor. Because, I mean, he was a lot of things before he was, you know what I mean? Well, no, it's funny because I wasn't, I'm still the least bragging person. But when you said, oh, guitar, like, it's cute. It's his hobby. But he's been playing, like, since he was 16. And he was in a band for 10 years. And then, you know. Before he was a doctor. Before he was a doctor. Okay. (laughs) Enough about that. I talk about him way too much right now. It's the most I've actually ever mentioned someone's name. What's that? That I'm dating on the show. Oh, Ross, 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 Right, now we break up, it's just going to be weird. Oh, it'd be sad. I'm kidding. He doesn't listen. We're not breaking up. Okay, so. mm. Are you sure he doesn't listen? Okay, you heard my. Yeah. Emily has, I mean, she she has a history of of dating guys who say they never listen, but she always finds out they do. So if that's, Ross probably listens. I don't think he has, maybe. He hasn't Mm -hmm. talked to me about it. Mm -hmm. Um, I love you, Ross. <laughs> How's that? Um, wow, I really hope he doesn't. This is Why? Weird. Well, there's because, nothing wrong. No, he's adorable. I yeah. adore him. But I, I, I hope. Never, here's never the other thing: him. is that there's the me. Like he came to one of my things once I when I was speaking him. and teaching, and you've met him a few times. Um, when we were speaking, I was I'm speaking drunk. something, and he's like, "It's just like it's just weird because there's like the sex with Emily you, and then there's the you." I'm like, "But yeah, it's yeah, no yeah. different." Like if that. I'm teaching, uh-huh. like oh, he was like a hustler workshop. I'm like, but or if he listens to me on the show. Like one time we got in a fight about something. I don't remember this. Or we oh, broke no. up. Yeah. And he was like, well, you didn't talk about that. I'm like, what? oh, I'm he like, does listen. But this is a while ago. I'm like, what am I going to go? I'm really sad. I mean, no, I don't talk about that. Barely. Do I. This is the most I've ever talked about anything. So Ross. no. What? Ross. Tell him something. Do you have a message for him? Hey, don't Ross, talk. how are you? I hope to meet you one day. I guess I have a couple times, but I think I was If drunk. you're listening, just know. That, but that, I think that's what he meant was like, he listens. He's like, well, hey, you didn't this. talk about this, Emily. You didn't talk about that. I'm like, I, I'm doing a show to educate people about sex, which I haven't even gotten to Ross, most of it yet. Yeah. If you're listening, we caught you. We now know that you listen. All right? <laughs> Busted. Okay. I love it. I love if he listens and it makes him happy. Okay. I just want everyone to be happy when you're listening. So here's the other <laughs> news. If you're unhappy, yeah. turn this off. Sexual objef- objectification, uh-huh. objectifying, uh, by a committed partner can be beneficial to a woman. So when I think of sexually objectifying a woman... I always think about, oh, you know, someone just saying, I just want her for sex or I love her body or she's hot. And it used to be sort of a thing that, you know, God, I feel so objectified. It's a terrible thing. But they're saying this study came out that sexual object, I don't know why I can't say it, objectification by a fully committed partner, such as a long-term boyfriend or husband, can be beneficial to women. And she might like it. More research on this, female Mm -hmm. sexual object, luckily it's object objectification, but then they go on to call it valuation, which I can actually say throughout the study, tends to focus on the negative consequences. That said, a team of researchers from Florida State and Northwestern University recently sought to investigate any possible benefits to sexual objectification. Mm -hmm. We believed it was important to investigate the implications of it uh, by women's long-term relationship partners. And this is so interesting. What they found was um, it asked men to report the extent to which they sexually valued their wives and asked women to report how committed to the relationship they believe their husbands to be, as well as both parties' overall marital satisfaction. The results showed the wives who felt their husbands were more committed and had higher levels of marital had higher levels of marital sa- satisfaction were more likely to see their husbands' sexual valuation of them as a positive force in the marriage. So women can benefit from it in the context of a relationship. So if you're just dating guy you're like, "Oh, he just thinks I'm hot and only wants my body." Yeah. But if you're in a committed place, it feels really good to be yeah. sexually valued by your partner. It's in easy. fact, we don't want to be treated like sex objects by anybody. But right. if we can decide who's going to treat me like a sex object, yeah. I want my man to be like, you're so fucking hot. Right. Every time he sees me, you walk in the door. I want I want you. This amazing like that to me is like diamonds for other women. Maybe. It's very easy to get it muddled and, and confused. I think you guys don't wear lipstick and mascara and like push up bras or skimpia so that we look at you and think oh wow her personality is fucking awesome no i mean i want you to think that but yeah, tell you guys me. all want to be objectified to it to an extent with the person i love love or like i want but that's to be how like... you're gonna get the person in the door right but that right and if it's somebody you don't like you don't but what i'm saying is even when you're with somebody this is my message to men 
even if you're with somebody and you're committed and you love her and you're like, she knows I think I hot. She's right. she knows I think she's hot. She knows that I value her. She knows that I think. And this is this might sound really superficial. She knows I think she's prettier. Or she smart. probably doesn't. Feel she pretty needs all to the hear time. it. Not and some women are uncomfortable. I'm not saying all women, but many women just we we put a lot. Of, I can't even tell you how much. Just being a woman, you don't have yeah. to do any of the stuff we do. The nails, the hair, the I'm waxing. I used to be vain. So. You're very I hot. Used, I just I said used to this go, the like, other day. Salons and stuff. I I was vain. Right. I was, well, I, was all, I had a chick brain for a minute there. Right, but yeah. we all want to hear it. And so if you're with your partner, you're like, oh, God, I haven't told her lately that you know I'm really attracted to her. You know, or when you're in bed, you're like, God, your body just really turns me on. When you're when you're feeling that and you're thinking it, just say it. Just say it. Yeah. Feels good. If, okay? if you're feeling it, might as well say it. Unless you're dating or married to a very stuck up bitch, and then maybe uh, knock her off of her her pedestal. See, well, okay, so you know menace. I mean? You know menace. Yeah. Menace has a theory that, and we t- we've been arguing about this for debating this for years. He's like, no, nah, because I always talk about compliment a woman ten times a day, and people you big ten times. Many. I agree, but if you do it twice, I'm happy. So I'm just saying ten, and if you do it twice, it's fine. But but just because you look nice tonight, by the way. Thank you. I like your blazer. I just say say I believed you. Look how gullible I am. <laughs> this is a new blazer. I re- can I tell you? Look at my face. I was like, that's so sweet. I'm really tired. I haven't slept. You're so sweet, Anderson, and you look you really tan. You look good though. Thanks. You do. Um. <laughs> and so the point is, oh, he was, I did. I was like, oh my God, tell me more. So, so he said, he was like, no, you know, you can't tell bitches that they look hot because then they'll just think they got you wrapped around their finger. Like yeah. that was his thing. And I'm like, if you think that, then you're an idiot. You're but then you're not confident. You're not yeah. in a good relationship. So, okay. Now we're going to move on to a very important part of the show. And this is our sex and dating resolutions. Okay. Okay. For the new year. For the new year. It's a new year. And here's the thing. The new year is, is loaded, right? It's time for reflection. We look back on the year. We think about what did we do? What didn't we do? We try to set goals for the new year. And then this whole resolution thing. I don't, do you set New Year's resolutions? Hey, there's so many different places you can do it in your life, too. Like, why not do it on your birthday? I know. You know what I mean? That's that a little more makes accurate. more sense. It makes more sense. Uh, but it, you know what makes sense with New Year's resolution, though, especially with vices and whatnot, is it's right after the holidays. There's not much going on in the month of January or February. You've already got all your booze in behind you with New Year's and Christmas and the like in-laws and all that stuff. So it's kind of a, a convenient time to try and- Are you going to try to quit smoking again this year? In February, because I can't do it with the- January's too tough. It's too tough. Yeah. I, I got to quit smoking and drinking and uh, everything else. I think you quit last February. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, good luck with that. But that's Thanks, the thing babe. is that there's so much pressure, you know, and I feel like it's also like, God, you know, if you ever made one and suck with it, you know, and if you make one and you stick with it, it's almost worse because and you don't because you don't stick with it. You're like, you might even be like, I'm not ever doing it again. Get depressed, yeah. But I want to give you some like doable. Failure. Yeah, you do. And I was I used to do it all the time. Like, F it. Like, I just try to live a good life and make changes every year. You put too much year. pressure on yourself. You can't exactly. do that. Exactly. You you're give like, oh my God, goal. I have to smoke 18 cigarettes on December 31st or whatever. I have to eat 16. Well, that would be good. Like, I only smoked 18 today. It's not bad. I'm doing better. Um, but I want to give you goals. some doable resolutions yeah. that will enhance your sex life and love life, whether you're single or in a relationship. So do me a favor. I want you to take a look at where you're at now. Maybe you're single and you want to date more. You want to meet more variety of people. Um, maybe you want to date less and just focus in on one person. Maybe you're in a relationship and it's, you know, gotten a little stale or maybe it's really heating it up and you hope it stays away. Wherever you're at right now, take a look at it and think about some kind of resolution you can make that will improve this part of your life that is so important because I know you think it's important because if you didn't, you wouldn't be listening to the show. So here's a few things you can do. And these are easy, so doable, so fun. And email me, okay? Here's another thing. After you make this resolution, I want you to email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com. I won't even share it unless you want me to. That, and that is a commitment to me that you've made it. And then I'm going to follow up with you. How's that? I'm going to follow up with you. Is this your own resolution? No. I'm just telling them. I'm going to. So you you make that commitment to me, and I've got my staff. They're going to read it. We're going to mark it. And then in three months, I'm following up with you. But if you're single, okay? I've got tips for singles. Make, and you want to find someone. And you want to date, make it your second job, okay? Ooh. Tell everybody you know that you're single. Mm-hmm. Put it out to the universe. Mm-hmm. Put it out to your various groups of friends. You know, because people are oh, wherever they live. Worst town to date in. And wait, wait, what? Worst everyone town says it's dated. the worst town. To I can't find yes. anybody. And I just think wherever you go, there you are. Mm-hmm. There's single people everywhere. And people love talking about how bad it is. And I always say, well, look at you. Like, like, what are you doing to You're find You're the common someone? denominator there. You wow. are the common denominator. Believe me. You can date on People say dating online sucks because everyone's bigger, better deal. At least you've got options. Mm-hmm. 
people do meet online. So date, so make a commitment to date online. Make a goal that you're going to go on one date a week. Right. Duty date. Even if you don't, you're like, I don't know. Just make yourself go out with that person. Right. Because it's it's like take every job interview. Like yeah. see how you can learn on the job. Um, talk to one, you know, whatever. Make Go on one match a week or get fixed up. Again, these take a new class. Do that. This could be part of your resolutions. I wanted to sew, or I'm going to go back to the gym. Commit to one class, something that you could do that's different you're, where dude, you're not hanging out with your friends. Yoga class. Dude, yoga. Yeah. The girls are doing the downward dog, and it's like you get and those just tons of girls in so there, high. and they're all like in, in touch with their bodies. It's true. And yoga is good for you. Like, hey, yoga is actually very healing can for I men and women. Add on one. Uh, uh, Please. Uh, uh, you don't want to sound uh, like, like you're desperate, though. Like, when you're, if you're telling everybody that you're single, on a regular I don't basis, mean like, I got friends like that in my life, and uh, they're pathetic. So don't don't like okay. be, you know what I mean. I'm talking about your best buddies yeah, yeah. that you respect let and you them, like their friends. Know. Not randos at work. Not your like I people. Think it's you easier don't like. for girls. No, but even okay. I'm sure you have a few close friends. You must cousins live in your area. Whoever. She's not talking to me. She's talking no, I'm to talking you to you guys. And if you next time you're with them, you're like, you know what? They might know you're single because everyone knows you're single, probably. But say, you know what? Do you know anyone single? Do you know anyone? Because think about it. I'd love to be fixed up. That to me is not desperate. It's like, and they might not at that moment, but guess what? Next week, they might right. be somewhere and they meet someone. And they're like, oh my God, my buddy, my buddy Joe is awesome. Do you want to go out? And He's that's how it happens. It's not just going to fall down your, down your lap, down the chimney like Santa. Okay. So also masturbate. This is a great time to masturbate. If you are single, especially if you're a woman, I know if you're a guy, you probably are. But if you're a woman and you you want to keep those engines going, you want to feel primed for sex. If you're just like, eh, I'm not going to do it till I'm with someone, you know, it's like exercise. The more you exercise, the more you want to. When you masturbate, you're like getting like erotic pleasure. You're getting all turned on. You can learn your body more, get a new toy. Also, working out, I'm telling you, the gym will improve your confidence. So if you've also been feeling like lower libido, not in the mood, when you work out, you'll feel healthier and therefore you'll be more ready and likely to date. But that goes back to like New Year's resolutions, the right. gym, I'm sorry. But Just, once again, reasonable reasonable goals and like the gym might, so not be, reasonable. might not be affordable or it might not be an option every day because of time. A 20 to 30 minute walk steps. is the same thing. Count the steps, exactly. Okay, so those are for singles. That is easy. So I want you guys to pick one of those and do that and commit to me relationships okay if you're in a relationship here's a great thing to do make a resolution with your significant other make a coupled resolution think about milestones look cuckold? Talk, coupled a cuckold cuckold resolution okay. no if you're in a relationship think about it like where do you want to be in two months six months 12 months you know frame it as a re- actually since all of you email me most of a lot of my emails are from listeners who are in a relationship who aren't quite sure how to approach a certain subject with their partner whether it's sex or dating or you know needs being met or not being met this is such a good way to do it because you could say you know be so fun sweetie let's do a resolution for our relationship and it's much easier way to discuss what you look for what you're looking forward to in the new year than to talk about like oh this sucks and that sucks so make this a fun discussion as it always should be when you're talking about like mixing up sex or relationships or make it light and from what i hear like i said most of you there is talking to your partner isn't so easy so it's a great exercise um to get what you want sexually and romantically, try one thing in the bedroom. Here's the thing. You know what, honey? Let's do a bucket list. You could do this on New Year's Eve, you know? Let's write down five things we want to try. You can go to a sex toy store. You could buy my book, Hot Sex. Anderson loves it. He has his nightstand. Um, it has 200 things in it. It's in my oven. It's in his oven. Watch porn together. Say, let's wrap up our favorite, you know, let's watch our favorite sex scenes in a movie. Listen to the film vault. He just, didn't you just do something on the best sex scenes? Yeah, we did best nude scenes, and I uh, disturbingly had nothing but dick. I know. Um, You know what? And, like, look, plan weekends away. Like, make a resolution that you're going to spend more quality time together. Get it, you know, and again, this is not for people who have so much money. You could get an Airbnb in your neighborhood. I don't care. Get away from the kids for a night. Um, You know, turn off your phones when you're together. Just say something like, one in a week, phones off. So pick one of those. That will improve you. That will be the what you need to reignite your relationship and to just make a resolution. So when you look back on it in three months, you're like, oh, there is some progress. Okay. Who's doing that? Email me. Anderson, which one of those are you going to do? Uh, I'm, I'm going to master a bit more. Okay. At yoga class. Speaking of which, I definitely have to say that in 2015, my body had a lot to learn and I didn't even think that it was possible but the Sibian is a thing that I'm so grateful for it will 100% push the needle in your sex life and your sexual satisfaction satisfaction whether you're single or in a relationship 
The six months I've had it, I've experienced things, like I said, I did not know possible. If you told me in June that I'd be having these kinds of orgasms when also, well, during intercourse and on the Sibian, I would not have believed you. Because the Sibian is a full-on sexual experience because it has a mount. It's the only one in the planet that has the unique mountable design that actually simulates the feeling of cowgirl woman on top, where most women are likely to orgasm. That's why he invented it 30 years ago. And the cool thing is you can customize it. It's your own experience. And if you have trouble reaching orgasm during intercourse, you can learn on the Sibian how to do it with your partner. He can be there holding you, touching you, rubbing you. And then you transfer that to your partner. Repeated rides in the semen can train your body to orgasm. It's a muscle that you haven't used yet with your partner, perhaps if you can't orgasm easily during intercourse, or you just want to experience different things. Check it out, and here's a testimonial from the web Sibian website. Having been with my wife before and after using the Sibian, you can't even compare the two. We had a healthy sex life, such a healthy sex life, and now it's gone to incredible heights. It made sex more enjoyable now because of the way her body responds. Rick and Shannon. So to hear what other happy customers have to say, go to Sibian.com. That's S-Y-B-I-A-N.com. And as a special treat, you get $75 off your first order with code EMILY75. Check it out. Okay. You know what, Em? Tell me, baby. The other day, uh, I said, I corrected someone, which I rarely correct people because I think it's snobby and gauche, but uh, somebody was saying the juju, and I said, this is Jeju. Jeju. Oh, the, the meme. Yeah, I'm like, the... oh my God, I'm like the sex ex- expert guy now because uh, of sex with Emily. Who brought it up? Some dude. He just said the juju. He said he was going to get one for his wife, and he's Did like, I tell I'm him getting about the it? juju, and actually, no, it was on the film vault. Oh. It was on the film vault. Was actually, it? Was it? On there. It was uh, some dude. It was Brian, my co-host, and he oh, was okay. talking. Right. Okay. So Jeju means to play in French. Yeah. And he's they like, make my favorite the toys. Juju, and I corrected him. Then I realized I'm like, oh no, I'm like the weird dude that knows. Dude, all about I've been sex talking toys. about it. That's hilarious. I love the Jejus. Um, I love the Mimi, but they have a new line called "Ooh" by Jeju. Uh oh, that's gonna be. And oh, that's what I gave my Chrono. Is he gonna be mad about this? But I did give one to his girlfriend. Um, he doesn't have a girl. It, oh well, his friend. Okay. Because he's like did pictures and they were really nice. I'm like, do you know anyone who wants sex toys? And he gave it to his friend. <laughs> she pays people in sex toys. It's really awkward at the toll booths. I do. It is awkward. Um, but anyway, it's Ubai Jeju. It's so cool because as the motor that I love in the Jeju, I wasn't even talking about it, but it has three pop tops or two pop tops. You could change it. It could be insertable. It can be a cock ring. Just check it out. All right. Okay. Ready? Ring. Here we go. So everyone emails. Thanks for emailing me. Feedback at sex with Emily.com. Tell me where you're from, how old you are, how you listen to the show. And, uh, just do it. Do it. It's easy. Okay, keeping Your sex, too. male or female. Sometimes we have a hard time. You know what? It's true. One of these emails was tricky. So yeah, it's helpful. You, you don't have to use your real name, but if your name is like Sam or Bob, or, no, Bob doesn't work. Uh, Alex. So, yeah, so if, you I, could say if, I'm a 27 year old female or male. So put okay. M or F or N A. Yeah, God, we're making it so complicated. Yeah, Give no. your social security number. No, don't do that. Mm. I don't like numbers. Dick pics. Just kidding. Hey, Emily. <laughs> she gave me a wink just now, so I don't think she's kidding, boys. My name's Manny. I'm 27, and I really appreciate you and your show. I've been listening for years. I used to listen to Love Line too as a teen, and it really helped me understand what to expect in dating and relationships. So I have an amazing girlfriend I've been with for two years. I say with because she lives in the UK, and I live in SoCal. It really sucks, but we're making it work. She's going to grad school in New York in August, and I'm planning to move there around the same time. I'm really excited about this opportunity in my life. I love this woman and feel that New York can give me the fresh start I've been longing for. My issue is that I have a tendency to create a more of an independent, interdependent type of relationship. I put their needs before mine, but I end up resenting the person I'm with because I feel like I'm losing my autonomy and that I'm always doing the 80-20 rule doing the 80 of the 80-20 rule. I really see a future with this one, M, and I don't want to mess it up. What do you suggest? Thanks for all you do. Shout out to Anderson. That guy's a G. Yo, Manny. Take care. Okay, Manny, a um, few things. The 80-20 rule, I always hear that in business, like you're supposed to spend um, 80% of your time on your client's who are bringing whatever, whatever, of the business that's Some your algorithm. most profitable. Yeah. So he's saying, what he's saying is he's spending more time on her than, than he is on himself. So this is a classic case codependency. of codependency. Okay. So for those who don't know, because it is a very confusing term to people because it's meant, you know, there is some debate about it, but really the bottom line, codependence is the pain that a lot of us experience in adulthood. And it comes out in relationships 
But the reason why we codependence happens, it comes from being wounded in childhood, which leads to a high probability of relationship problems and or addictive disorders later in life. And the reason why it's confusing is because like 40 years ago when they started talking about it, it was really just surrounding alcoholics and people were dating alcoholics. Um, so they just thought it was, oh, I'm, I'm codependent because I'm helping him drink. And But really, it's, um, it's the general population experience, you know. And, and the thing is, it says dysfunctional family. Well, they kind of they do tie it back to people who have, you know, because I'm thinking whose family was a little bit dysfunctional. Right. But you can't tie it to like an ill parent or an emotionally abusive parent or a parent with an addiction. Um, so... If you are codependent and your relationships, this is something that happens, I'm going to get to me in a second, your relationships can become really one-sided because you're constantly trying to meet all your partner's needs, you're a people pleaser, um, but then when they don't give back to you, you get frustrated, passive aggressive, your needs aren't met, and it's a very vicious cycle and you get resentful. And it can become destructive. And it is a pattern, unfortunately, that is learned in childhood and passed down sometimes from your parents. So, Manny, here's the deal. I have to give you just great kudos when I was reading your email. I was like, wow, Manny, like that's really mature. You're 27 insightful. years old, very insightful. And that's the first step in recognizing and fixing the problem that yeah. you, you are admitting that you have an issue here. And the only way to tackle this is to get your butt into therapy because this is not the kind of thing you're going to handle on your own. Mm -hmm. Because this is the kind of therapy that you go into and you actually do need to go and talk about your childhood. How did these patterns develop? You know, you go back, you do, you think about like your parents and you let go of all that and you learn new behaviors that will help you be in a healthy relationship because it'll, it'll help with this relationship too, but it's also going to be good for you in any other relationship exactly. you have down the road. But maybe you should tell him right now that it's definitely going to help her and it's going to be good for her in the relationship and that then he'll be more likely to go. Exactly. Because he's codependent. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, it will be great for her. It'll yeah. be great for like probably so, his boss, his sister, it'll everyone. It'll be good for everyone that you care about around you. Right. And in the meantime, I would say get in front of the problem. So just be honest and open with your girlfriend because this is this is who you are. This is the issue. She might not quite get it if you sometimes have been displaying some of these behaviors. Let her know you're dealing with and that you don't want to repeat patterns in the past and ask her to be patient with you on your path to self-discovery, Manny. I love you and thank you for emailing and listening Aww. for being such a fan of the show and for liking Anderson. She loves you, man. I love people who love Anderson. No, but man, thanks, Manny Man. I appreciate Manny Man. Appreciate your support. Okay. Another one. Guess what it's about? Probably sex or maybe relationship. Orgasms. Oh, it's kind of like sex, right? Kind of. I said, oh, orgasm. Oh, oh, oh. What's your uh, new favorite uh, toy? Sibian? Wasn't it the ooh? Oh, the ooh by Jeju. Oh my god, they're <laughs> so cool. You gotta say it like that. They're really cool, actually. You could check them out at um. And if you're curious, I think just go to goodvibes.com or click on the banner on my site and look ooh by I Jeju. Just, like but you name. also get there's like a code. I have a discount code. It's like Emily. What? The the, the, the discount cute. code is ooh with ooh. nine O's. Exactly. No. Hey Emily, I've been listening to your podcast for a few months and I'm loving them. I was cracking up on the airplane while listening and had a hard time explaining to my boyfriend why without possibly offending people around us. He couldn't tell she couldn't tell her boyfriend why she was laughing. I wonder what it was. I know. I always wanted to be like, why are you laughing? Um, I'm 23 from Denver, Colorado, and listen for my podcast app on my iPhone. My question is about having multiple O's in a row or within close proximity to each other. I've tried to have this happen alone, but find myself just having one orgasm that leaves me too sensitive to continue to use a vibrator or that my mind kind of sees it as a check mark and wants to continue on my day right after continue on with my day even though i set out with wanting to achieve multiple orgasms is this something that everyone is able to experience or should i just go about it in a different fashion thanks for being so awesome and fun to listen to andrea thank you andrea for the awesome question because yes this is completely doable you'll never hear me say that everything is possible for every person but i can tell you this there's very specific process um, that you could try in achieving O's. And I could tell you that for a lot of people I've taught this to, they have achieved them. So don't give up yet, especially if you already are orgasmic. It's kind of like, I don't know, I just thought of this analogy. When I used to run marathons, I was like, oh my God, can I ever run a marathon? And I was running maybe four miles. And they were like, if you can run four miles, you can run a marathon. And I was like, that makes no sense. No, it just still makes no sense. Well, it's true. Because if you can get out there and do it, you just add another mile. You add a mile of training process. It means you're well on your way. You're probably the hardest yeah. part of starting and exactly. getting to the four-mile point. I get it. And I, I kind of feel that way about multiple yeah. O's. Um, so here's the thing. You can do this. This is great also if you uh, your goal. This should be your resolution. Okay, so here's the steps. Practice patience. So you said you tried to do it, and then you're like, check, check, I'm done. 
Patience, just like any time we're trying to learn something new, it really comes into this process as well. It's It'll be your ticket. Multiple mm-hmm. others. They'll be coming a lot of you. Maybe you'll have five. I don't know. Um, and it might not happen the first time you try it. So hence the patience. But remember, it's about the journey, not the destination, especially when it comes to sex. So the more that you're focusing on the orgasm, you're like, tonight I'm doing three. It won't happen. So just if you can, just be like, you know what? I'm going to have a fun masturbatory uh, episode tonight. I'm going to listen to my favorite music, watch some porn, use a new toy, whatever it is. I mean, you guys, you could be thinking that that's your goal, but don't be so focused on it. Casual date with yourself. And just a casually casual date, date yourself. Yeah. Exactly. Don't commit yet. Don't commit yourself in the first don't masturbation. Don't overthink it. Right. Don't um, show up with flowers. Because the best part about masturbation and exploring, even if you're not looking for multiples, is that we have so many goddamn erogenous zones that we go our lives without discovering. And you know how you discover them? Masturbation, or with a really curious partner, which is amazing. If or you, have if you one fall of those. into a tank filled with octopus and you're naked, it's going to happen. Probably you're going to find something new. Okay, so also you got to stay present. So you do when your mind's going, I'm done. I don't know, it's not going to happen. You got to go back to your body. So every time your mind's going, oh, I just had one. Is it going to back to the body mentally and physically after the first first orgasm? If you get overwhelmed, frustrated, you're just going to shut down your body for a business like you've experienced. Um, you said that that happened to you before, Andrea. So just turn your focus to the sensations that you're feeling at that time. So if you're like, oh, I just had one and now my clitoris is super sensitive and I wonder what's for dinner, go back to your clitoris. Go back to that experience. How did that orgasm feel? Um, don't allow those thoughts to pull you out of the moment. And this is great practice for day-to-day life. Breathe, okay? This is going to be your ticket, one of your, your second ticket to Oland, patience and breathing. When you're staying present and you take yourself out of your head, you also have to remember to breathe. Because a lot of times we hold our breath when we're about to orgasm. We get anxious or we just hold our breath. But when you breathe, you can actually train yourself to move that orgasm through you. And it also relaxes your body and expands your ability to experience pleasure. Deep breaths also help the oxygen flow. Right. Right? Oxygen, This needs more to be orgasms. your next workshop. Like Lamaze, but... For breathing You're with so orgasm. right. This is it. Who would come? Uh, <laughs> women Three times. want to. Yeah. Get it? Um, women that women You guys will all come to my workshops, right? Um, so it's like your nervous system. Like your nervous system can do its job <laughs> if you are increasing the amount of pleasure that your brain can process. Make sense? Okay, so then you got to become clitoris, okay? The clitoris oh, no. the is important. Um, the clitoris is the focal point, as you know, female arousal, 8,000 nerve endings, and... It is the secret to unlocking your orgasmic potential. So you know, Andrea, how to have that first one, right? Wham, bam, thank you, man. You got it. But after you reach the first one, explore new techniques for stimulating yourself through indirect touch. So if it's sensitive around your clitoris, rub the areas around it. Stroke your inner thighs. Play with your nipples. Vary your position and the pressure and the speed of your stroke. So don't go back to that quadrant of the clitoris where you had the orgasm. You can have orgasms in other parts of your clitoris or you just might need a little break so just take your hands use some lube some coconut oil like massage oil candles around your body and you know you probably just require a short break before you the sensitivity goes away actually and go back to the hot spot or the new hot spot sex toys huge fan of sex toys for the multiple o's again experiment what feels good with a small clitoral vibe Um, make sure that you don't let the arousal drop completely so you know when you said you had that first one you're like "Eh." keep it going but again, take it off that, if you were already using one, use it to trace around your inner thighs, your nipples, so you just keep it going. That's just a let, That's just like the first wave, okay? And you can also crank it down if it was up high, crank it down and then rebuild it. So you're building and building to the sensations again. Um, you know, using your nipples. And just remember, it might take some time, but stick with it. And if you have been listening, you might have heard the story, but if not, it's one of my favorites of 2015, Lori, who works with me. I gave her the WeVibe Touch because we all try different toys in the office and review them. And she said to me, I've never had a multiple orgasm. And I said, you know, and I told her exactly what I just told you all. And I told her some of the things to look out for and what to do. The next day was the show where we were reviewing the WeVibe Touch. And she didn't tell me this until the show, but she said, Emily, I had five, five orgasms that night because she just relaxed. That's five times her record? Yeah. In one night. I was like, holy moly moly. So there you go. Um, I think everyone's going to have them now. That should be good news for resolution. I wonder how many guys did listening to that just now. How many guys do you think are jacking off? I hope not that many. It's creeps. Think about that. Oh, my God. I hope not. Okay. Here we have another one. (laughs) Creeps. No, you know what? I don't care. 
I know you. If don't, I turn you you're on, you're a hippy dippy. Am I too? We covered this. I'm not a hippie. I am a hippie. I have hippie sensibility. I, don't I love care the dead. I like if you're the dead. Beating off while you're listening to me. Whatever, man. Who can judge, man? As long as you're taking it in. Um, I'm so not pressurable. I'm just like, I'm glad you're listening. Tell your friend. Oh, you know what you could do? Tell your friend. If you like the show and you just came, be like, hey, guess what? This is better than porn because porn not actually how guys is not me. Not how guys work. They'll, do, they'll, they'll finish and they'll God be horribly ashamed. And the last thing they're going to do is call a friend and say, I, uh, I just beat it's off so to a mean. podcast. mean. Okay. So here's the next uh, email. How to date two girls at once. Anderson, you might have something to say about this before you were married. When you're single... Dear Emily, when you're single, what is the best way to handle going on dates with more than one person? Should you be upfront about going on dates with another person? What if you end up liking both? Tips would be greatly appreciated, Chris. Okay, Chris, here's the deal. When you're dating casually, unless they ask if you're dating other people, you don't need to bring it up on the first date or even the second date. I mean, I always assume that if I'm dating someone, they're probably dating other people. So that's okay. Either way, it you don't have to have a big conversation about it early on. But this is when you have the conversation, when it starts to get sexual. If you know you're going to be intimate with them or you're starting to be intimate, it's considered just good form. Let your partner know, hey, you know, I'm dating other people. And of course, you have to use protection. So it's for your sexual safety, which you should always be using. Um, if you do start to notice that you're getting some feelings, then you should also be really open about your dating situation. Now, if you end up liking both of them, if you're all on the same page, you're fine. You can all date each other and, you know, date whoever you please. Because eventually what happens with those, like I've done that. I've dated like three guys at once, two to three. It gets exhausting mm. though. Because then you don't remember. You're like, remember I told you that story about my dad and the and clown? Gotta... And they're like, no. And then I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, you totally, I, when we were at that place. Oh. I know. You got to call my memory's already bad, right. Or, or sweetie, because you're afraid you're going to use the other long. person's name. It doesn't last long. So, um, but if there's one person that decides they prefer exclusivity, then you got to choose. Either it's going to be you doing the, you know, you might decide and give them the ultimatum. They might give you the ultimatum. And that's when it happens. But I like the idea of you dating casually and seeing multiple people to, you know, increase the likelihood that you're going to find someone that you want to be with. But how have you handled it, Anderson, in the past? Poorly. I see. I thought that. What did you do? What was the wrong way to do it? Well, I was uh, at a place where I was just really tired of getting my heart broken and being a mm-hmm. monogamous, serial monogamous dater. And uh, I was kind of uh, being very promiscuous. And I was like seeing like, f- I think five, maybe six different people kind of throughout the week. And it was exhausting. For, for how then, many weeks? For uh, Same five? Yeah, like people were coming and going. It was just one right. of those periods of my life. You know I what I mean? Like all... I was meeting people everywhere I'd go. Everywhere I'd go, I'd find somebody different and new. And it was just, and I was... It's kind fun. of trying to be cool with it right. and try to be, but I was never good at being that guy. You know what I mean? Like I, I would, I would stay in contact with people after one night stands because I felt dirty that it was <laughs> oh, a one night stand. Oh, you told me this. Yeah. Did you like become friends with them for a long time? But I did go through it. But then I, it with me anyways, like it's, it's pretty easy to fall pretty hard to, for like more than one person. And that's what ended up happening. And it was ugly. So. And then you eventually. I figured it out. Right. But uh, yeah, it's. He'll figure be it careful. out too. Yeah. Be careful. Uh, Any advice? Words of wisdom for him? pitfalls yeah i mean just really be cognizant of other people's idea uh, feelings other than your own don't let your own cloud right. other people because it's, it's it's a way to really really hurt people that's true and i learned that the, the, the worst pain i can feel because i'm somewhat codependent is by hurting other people and i still think about that period of my life and right. feel like i get like i do that thing where i like i right. twitch in my car like, you know what I mean? ah, yeah, yeah. I that, yeah. what do i do I think, I think that's great advice. And the truth is, most people are very, very forgiving. In fact, people appreciate the truth, obviously, more than they do lies. And I found that I had to learn that, too. Like, I'm for a while, I went through a period where I was just not committed. I would go on dates with people, and I'm like, I'm really not ready to be in a committed relationship. And then I I would tell them that. And they always just appreciated that I was honest about it. You know, they're like, okay, I get it. Like, and if they were down with that, they were. But it just felt so great to be free about that. But for a long time... For a while, I wasn't able to, and so that didn't feel good either because I would be dating multiple people, and they weren't asking, but I felt bad. So, you know, and, you honesty, knew, and you probably really like some of them, and you're afraid yeah. that if you're honest with them, they'll go away, right. and but you want to keep your- Exactly. Yeah. Keep your options. The whole thing. So that's the deal. Okay, that's all we have time for. Anderson, happy, happy New Year. I love you. Happy I'm grateful for you this year. I'm grateful for and you. And every year. Um, and um, happy New Year to all my listeners, and thank you all. I am nothing without you, seriously. So thank you for listening to the show and supporting it for 10 years. Also, we are looking for interns, anyone living in this area, L.A. area, Orange County. If you can get your ass to Hollywood, we will talk to you. We want writing samples, email, and resumes. Feedback at sexwithemily.com. 
And hey, right now, while you're emailing me about your resolution, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Sex with Emily and like my Facebook.com slash Sex with Emily page. And, and if you uh, want to help uh, M's podcast and get like listed and whatnot, the way to do that is to uh, review it or go, on give, it like a, give it like a, yeah, on iTunes, five. give it like a one or a five. One or a five. Not a one or you a five. That's what I always say on the film vault. I don't, I don't like any mess. No, I don't, I don't like, want any ones. Uh, ones don't even five. go. Delete uh, your iTunes. Uh, all right, the fives or nothing. It but, actually does help us because a few years ago, we we did this thing where we charged for the podcast by mistake. Why would you do that? Because I was so broke. Like, And this company came to me and they're like, 99 cents a day. That was when I'm you like, were showing your nipples, right? No, I never show my nipples. But I was like, God, maybe. But that didn't work. People got mad and they wrote me. Oh, so I know then, the company. Like, I know the company, yeah, right? No, yeah, dude. It was, Hate them. And I was just like, death. I was like, I don't know how to do this. So anyway. All right. Like it. I love you all. Thanks so much for listening. Was it good for you? Email me. Feedback at sexwithemily.com. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. Okay, everybody. You know what's amazing? Uh, we talked a lot about resolutions, but what is amazing is to relax and de-stress in 2016. Stress is a huge killer of your sex drive. Guess what? You know how to de-stress? A little massage candle. Get an aromatherapy massage candle from Emily and Tony. Um, it looks like a regular candle. Comes in three different scents that all smell amazing. And then it, you you burn it. You blow it out. It is not waxy. It will not hurt you. But it turns into the most luxurious massage oil. Give your partner a massage. It is your secret weapon in the bedroom. In fact, someone emailed me. My girlfriend was skeptical at first, but agreed to try the warm oil on me first and gave me a back rub. Then I reciprocated. And we... Ha- we um, could not stop talking about how good the candle smells and how great the oil fells, feels. And I'm convinced that the scent and the candle helped us through some of the barriers to sex we have faced lately. So for a limited time, guess what, Anderson? Hmm. 50% off all wow. Emily and Tony products at emilyandtony.com. Including the menage a trois yeah, with you the get all three. spouts. I, I love, love the menage a trois. They're and then one, They're so cute. One more thing. If you travel a lot, they're great. Promescent. This is about your penis. I love being able to help you have great sex and relationships. Numbs it up. Promescent helps you last longer in bed, um, twice as long, actually. And you don't need to take a pill. It is a quickly absorbing delay spray. You put it on before sex, 10 minutes before it, and you'll last twice as long. And it's also the only FDA-approved treatment for premature ejaculation. You don't need a prescription, though. You can go to promescent.com, click on the banner on my website, and get yourself a bottle. I'm telling you, in the three years I've been talking about it, not one person has told me it didn't work. I've only heard that it changed their sex life, and they were finally able to last long enough and please their partner. It's a good thing. Check it out, promescent.com. Thanks for listening.